second run of the bobsleigh two-man bobsleigh competition we have an interesting set of developments here pierre looters canada's pierre looters expected to challenge for a medal perhaps even gold finds himself in fourth place two one hundredths of a second out of the bronze medal position currently held by italy's gunter huber gustav vader of switzerland blazed the track 52.33 seconds that's a brand new record he is sitting in first place and a young swiss slider Rato Getsi sitting in second place five one hundredths of a second out of top spot Canadians well represented here as Canada two is about to take to the track for the second time Chris Laurie and Gre Glenroy Gilbert were 12th or tied for 12th after the first run Chris of course will be racing in the four-man we have seen different kinds of logos, paint colors. Is there a rule regarding that at all? Well, there certainly is for Olympic competition. The Canadian program may not have benefited from it at all. Uh, we at Bobsleigh Canada approached the IOC about colors, patterns, and the IOC responded that we'd have to change uh, our colors, and they did that just the other day, leaving it to the last minute because they said our corporate colors reflected too, uh, were too close to that of Visa's who uh, is our sponsor. Which is sponsor an official Bob sponsor Canada. here as well. Unfortunately, they came down hard on us, and yet they let the Swiss and some of the other countries get away with their paint jobs. Oh. Canada 2, Chris Laurie and Glenn Roy Gilbert. Five oh seven. Oh, the it's start. unfortunate there. They had that tap just entering into curve one, and that pushed them away from the curve. It's very important up at these top few curves while you're getting speed to stay clean. In other words, be in the middle of the track and not bump and tap around. 52.99 was their time in the first run. Looking for an improvement here. Chris finds himself behind, and this is in a reference to the sleds that come down earlier. He wants to make sure that on that leaderboard it says number one or a negative number. Unfortunately, he's gaining time as he heads down the track. He's two tenths of a second behind the Germany two sled, which does not bode well for Chris Laurie. 5372, which is actually slower than his first run. His combined time, 146, 71. No doubt Chris will not be pleased with that run. We see at the start a good, powerful initial thrust by Chris. He gets his arms down and his shoulders behind the push bar. And see the ice there, he's just ripping up. Heels up behind him and loaded in and settled. Same with Glenroy. And then all of a sudden the back end slips out and you see them bunt that wall. He missed his whole exit point into curve one. How much of an effect will that have two or three turns down the way? Well, initially it might take off as much as the tenth. Not only in time, though, but in speed. That probably slowed him down in reference to other sled, three, four kilometers an hour. From Great Britain, Mark Tout, Lennox Paul. Great Britain won. Mark's been using another brakeman most of the season. And just for the Olympics here, he got back with Lenny Paul, who we slid with for the past two years. 505 starts pretty competitive, although we would hope that uh, he can find himself down around the low fives where his countryman was earlier. In fact, Sean O'Sullivan, Sean O'Sullivan, Sean Olson, a 502 start. Mark's a big guy at about 6'3, but he sits well on the sled. You can see his eyes are just above the edge of the cowling there, and Lenny's tucked good and well down behind him. He's improving on his time now. Let's hope he gets a nice straightaway coming on the 13. A little bit of a skid there, but he kept it under control. 122.5 kilometers per hour, the average speed. Great Britain 153.15. Combined time 145.92. So that puts Mark Tout in first place for the time being, just ahead of teammate Sean Olsen. German veteran Rudy Lochner, seventh after the first run. I guess Rudy could be equated with Alberto Tamba as far as the skiing is concerned in terms of 
marching to a different drummer perhaps and uh, he certainly enjoys the Olympic experience. Well, he's got a different attitude, that's for sure. His <laughs> preparation is suspect, but he's here as Germany won, and uh, they're not used to being in seventh place, that's for sure. Not after any heat, so uh, he'll be looking to move ahead a couple of spots anyways. Rudy is 40 years old, a silver medalist in Alberville two years ago, and a World Cup title, rather a World Championship title in 91 when he beat Vader. Here we see him in these upper curves. Of course, he's trying to come down the middle of the, the straightaway. Clean land tree in. We don't want to see him waver up and down. Nice line all the way around the curves. And referencing the time, we want to ensure that it always shows a negative, and that means he, at that point he's number one. Little tap there, of course, and that'll hurt because that's not both bales hitting at the same time, but front and then the back, and that'll cost him time. Rudy Lochner in Germany won 53.09. His combined time is 145.83, which for the time being puts the Germans in first place. And we will return to Hunderfossen for uh, more of the bobsled, the two-man bob today, Pierre Luters and David McEachran coming up, and uh, we'll be back. The training starts at dawn and goes on until you drop when the dream is Olympic gold. Chris Laurie, Olympic bobsled contender, can't let a cold slow him down. Hall's mentholiptus with vapor action relieves sore throat, coughing, and nasal congestion. So Chris can get back to the training, to his team, to the dream. Trust Hall's to help you cope with a cold. Hall's, now available in a great new orange flavor. These remarkable Canadian women have a few things in common. They're dedicated. They're concerned with eating properly. They're each a world champion in their respective sport. And they all drink milk with energy and 15 essential nutrients as part of a balanced diet. Five Canadian women, all world champions. Makes you wonder what the guys are drinking, doesn't it? What can you get for $99 a month that comes with a total satisfaction guarantee, state-of-the-art cartridge technology, and standard features that others consider optional? Well, you could get this great copier for your small business. Take another look. Call 1-800-ASK-XEROX. But the Taurus, he never stops talking about it. Taurus is a super sedan. Well, because I'm an accountant, I'm always concerned about cost. They, they were both the same price, weren't they? The wagon and the sedan, yes. We looked at Chrysler, but they don't have a wagon. Air conditioning was one factor. Cruise control, I enjoy that. We took six people in the wagon. Even with your mother there, it was... All right. All right. <laughs> it's great, aesthetically, just the overall design. Great sound system. As a musician, He's I mean. got very good ears. Who says you can't make everybody happy? With our total satisfaction guarantee, you decide whether you're happy with one of our copiers or not. And if you're not, we'll replace it. Take another look at Xerox, the document company. For details, call 1-800-ASK-XEROX. The Olympic flame burning in Lillehammer using environmentally sound rotting vegetable biogas, which fits in with this whole green games idea that they're following pretty carefully along here in uh, Lillehammer. Now we head back to Hunderfossen for the two-man Bob. Pierre Luters of Edmonton, Dave McEachran of Charlottetown, very fast starters. They're the fastest in the world. They're still ahead in Canada One. We take you back with Clark Flynn and Sunil Joshi. Up until now, it was just a case of jockeying for positions. The top four sleds still to come. They will be competing for the medals, including Canada's Pierre Luters and Switzerland's Gustav Vader. Herbert Schosser still wearing those bandages to keep his hamstrings warm. He's had some difficulty with some of his crewmen pulling a hamstring in selection, so uh, he doesn't want to go out with an injury. Hubert Schosser and Thomas Schroll of Austria won. Sixth after the first run. 
That's a good position. He's more known as a four-man driver, so like Chris Laurie, he's just using this two-man uh, competition for experience. Uh, a good placing, but experience for the four-man. An unusual introduction to the sport. He was introduced to the sport by former bobsledder Fritz Sperling while they were both working at a factory repairing machines that makes crystals. <laughs> Fritz was a crewman back in 1976 behind Austrian head coach Werner Delacart, who was the Canadian coach for five years through the 80s. Uh, Fritz was a big man, and he moved up to the front. Uh, he was about 6'4", and his brakeman was about 5'8", so they kind of had their sizes reversed from what we see now. Little tap. Everybody seems to have the difficulty, and it doesn't come necessarily in the straightaway, but from their exit of 13, they're waiting way too long to pull it off. Into the finish, 53.02 for Austria 1. Combined time, 145.73. Canadian fans dotting the track in anticipation of a medal here today, hopefully. Actually, the medal will be handed out tomorrow. Pierre Luters currently sitting in fourth place, two one-hundredths of a second behind Italy 1, piloted by Gunter Huber. Now, he had an excellent run going in number one, but had some problems in the fourth and fifth intervals. What do you think happened? Well, I think initially he made his mistake up at the coming out of curve three. He, the sled sipped sideways on them. Excellent start. Oh, my God. Dude. Four one hundredths faster than he had in the first heat. This is amazing, and this is where Pierre is the best in the world. And it's very important that he have a great start, and therefore the inexperience that he has with regards to driving won't hurt him as much because he can make just that one or two more mistakes than the other drivers. He's a very intense person. Could that have been a problem for him in the first run and that he was just a little too rigid? He was just a little too sure of his line. He's got to let the sled run a little bit more. Maybe take those little taps that uh, only cost you minimal amount of time as opposed to being trying to get that perfect line. Here we see him a little tap. He's hugging that right wall and losing time. He's got to let that sled run a little bit more, not steer it so often. Pierre Luters coming into the finish, 53-2-5. That is fifth fastest. He will not like that time because his combined time now is 145.88. You see him shaking his head. A start, 4.93, which is an improvement of 4.97. But Canada's Pierre Luters sits in fourth place at this point with the top three still to come. Huber, Getschi, and Gustav Bader. Italy won with Gunter Huber and Stefano Ticci. There's nothing more that Gunter would like than to follow his brothers home with a medal. Yesterday, Wilfried won the gold in the doubles luge. Norbert, the silver. His other brother, Arnold, was fourth in the singles, beaten by countryman Armin Zogler. Well, although Gunder doesn't have as good a start as Pierre or some of the other countries that they're competing here, he's a wonderful driver. He's got the very finesse. He doesn't overdrive, lets the sled run a lot, has a lot of ice experience. After the first run, it was Huber's sled that was ahead of Luters. By two one hundredths of a second. Here he's picking up time. We saw him with a deficit come the start. And now he's back to zero, so. Driving experience paying off for Gunther Huber of Italy. A little bit of a skid there. He would have gotten into that curve late, but. Uh, his time's reflecting just a great run here. Excellent run for Italy, 152.80, which puts him in first place for the time being. His brakeman, Stefano Ticci, very happy. <laughs> Switzerland, too, Reto Getschi and Guido Acklin. Five one hundredths of a second behind Gustav Vader and Switzerland one. 
You saw the reflection of the ice on those runners. They're polished with diamond paste in preparation, and they are smooth. There's no uh, pits or any bumps in those runners. 5.01 was his start, which is three one hundredths of a second faster than what he had in the first run. So he too has improved on his start. Yes, I think they've gotten the jitters out and now they can relax and get pushing as well. It's warmed up a bit too, so that allows them to, in their runs and sprinting that they do in preparation to push the bob, just be a little bit more relaxed. Four one hundredths of a second ahead of Italy one and Gunter Huber. He had a wonderful straightaway into 14 there. Although he's losing time to Gunther's run. 52-7-6. Which is first. Combined time 145-14. With one more sled to come in the top seed. And that belongs to countryman Gustav Vader of Switzerland. Here we see Rado right down on the push bar, head down, hips are back, ripping that ice. A clean load, in other words, he's right into his driver's seat and got a hold of his rope, and Guido in and tucked down behind him, and now he'll negotiate that top curve. Switzerland won. Gustav Vader, who was the first out of the shoot in the first run and immediately set a track record, 52.33 seconds. Will he improve on that? Well, Donald took about six strides out before he turned his hands over from the palms in to the being the palms out, and then quickly owed it in behind him. The 502 start, which is excellent for this crew. Two one hundreds better than what he had the first run. Now as we watch the sled go down in the straightaways, we're looking for his head position to be in the middle and his runner tips to be pointed and the sled in the middle of the run. In the curves, he wants to be parallel with that lower guardrail that surrounds the course. Gustav Bader, who has not finished lower than first or second since 1989 at the World Championships in both the two and four man. Trying to set himself into a gold medal position before the third and fourth runs. He's third. Third fastest time, which is 52.91. His combined time is 145.24. So he does not overtake his countryman in Switzerland two, Rado Getze. After the second run, Switzerland two with Rado Getze sitting in first place just ahead of Gustav Vader. Gunter Huber in the bronze medal position ahead of Austria one and Hubert Schusser and the veteran Rudy Lochner in the fifth position. Canada's Pierre Luders was fourth after the first run and within striking distance of a bronze. However, he finished after two runs in seventh. Seven tenths of a second behind your leader, Rado Getze of Switzerland two while Canada 2 with Chris Laurie tied for 15th position. Well, we will be back. Uh, we'll have more coverage of the bobsled, obviously, tomorrow and the final.